guys, how y'all doing today? My name is Franchise Fanatic and welcome back to the channel. And today, if you guys, this is another Ninjago related video. Now today we're going to be talking about not the Ninjago TV show or the Lego Ninjago movie or the Ninjago, you know, sets. Uh, there's probably a few behind me. Uh, we're going to be talking about some canon Ninjago stuff that, again, isn't the show. It is actually a book. So uh, today we're specifically talking about Lego Ninjago Spinjitzu Brothers Book 1, uh, The Curse of the cat Eye Jewel. Now I picked book up. Uh, I picked book up. I picked the first and second books up from Barnes and Noble uh, a little while ago. Uh, I don't know, a week or two ago. And uh, you know, I, I kind of been looking forward to them because I know there's uh, the Dark Island trilogy, which I really effing want, but I can't find it because it's like a you know million dollars online. But uh, we're also going to be getting that uh, Canon Ninjago comic book in April of 2022, tart, uh, titled Garmadon. And uh, you know, it'll be following the events of Garmadon uh, after episode. Season 10, uh, March of the Oni, which is really cool, because uh, that, that's, I actually made a video on it, because I'm like, you know, Garmadon is such a good effing character and such a good villain, uh, not just in Ninjago, but in, you know, franchises, and I really wanted to know what happened to him after he left the monastery in Season 10, so now we're going to finally, you know, actually see what happens, so that's cool. But being able to actually, you know, kind of visit Wu and Garmadon before Garmadon turns into, you know, Lord Garmadon, the bad guy, uh, and Wu's a little older, this is them not necessarily as children, more or less as teenagers. So, you know, kids, teens, adults. Uh, it does mention uh, that Garmadon did get, you know, kind of jacked up by the, the Great Devourer, you know. And he's got only blood, whatever. But uh, this is actually a really good canon book that, you know, I was expecting to like. And, you know, the, the pictures are really nice. If you can see, if you aren't even, you can... You can see that, but, you know, whatever. Uh, you've got really cool characters. Really good artwork in there, which is really nice. Almost every page has one or two pictures in it. Pretty freaking cool stuff. And uh, it's not just, oh, Wu and Garmin on, on an adventure. They actually do things and they meet people that are never seen before. So, at the back of the book, uh, you know, they have a little glossary here. And they've got some cool... They've got Adara, which is like a skilled warrior of the Ancient Order of Felice, which is like a, a really cool thing. They have Esphira from, of course, Season 11. Uh, they got the cat Eye Jewel, Dylan... Uh, not not my friend. The uh, brave warrior in ancient order of Felis, which is kind of cool. He's like a, he said he's a he's a scout among the jewel guardians. Uh, we've got Komala, not Kamala, <laughs> uh, the the good one, um, saying that she's the uh, the wise leader of the jewel guardians, which is really cool. Uh, we've got some other stuff like Nineko, who is the you know the main uh, character, you know, like the cat woman, which is really cool. It was kind of cool to see uh, like a new version of cats or a new version of animals uh, in Ninjago, because you know we have the Chima, you know, world or whatever, the Chima um, dimension or whatever, uh, which is uh, canon to Ninjago, but this is actually, you know, a, a literal cat creature, a woman who turned herself into a freaking cat, and they live, the, you know, the temple, it looks really stupid when I first, there's a picture in here that, like, the, the, the guardian, or, the, you know, the temple of Phileas or whatever, uh, let me find, here, here it is, this one right here, I mean, it looks stupid as all get out, because, you know, it's just like, I'm looking at it, I'm like, really? They got freaking these, like, dangly things. It, it looks like a cat playground, you know, for, like, a real cat that you buy from PetSmart. And then I turned the page, and, you know, it made sense. But, uh, uh, you know, at first I'm getting into this book, and I'm like, this is kind of silly, you know. I know Ninjago can get silly sometimes, very rarely. You know, it's probably the most serious show I've ever seen. But uh, there is a lot of stuff around, you know, some goofy, kind of like Star Wars, right? Uh, there's some silly stuff, but it's all grounded in, quote-unquote, reality. Uh, and, and we really have this element where, you know, there's cats and there's cat people and there's the Temple of Felice and, you know, there's nine co, you know, nine lives of a cat. There's a lot of kind of wordplay, but it never gets silly to the point of being stupid or like <laughs> cat puns. You know, they don't do that. It's just a legitimately well-written story. You know, it's not a kid's book. And I know it says your uh, Random House Kids uh, kid book. It's not like I read it. I'm 20 freaking three years old. And this is... As violent, as action-packed, as well-written as the show. If you're a kid, you'll probably still like it. But I don't want to say this book, much like the show in general, or the Ninjago franchise, Ninjago is not made for children. It is just appropriate for older children, or, you know, early teenagers and up. And this is the same thing with this book. It's not a kid's book. If you are a kid and you read it, fine. But it's really for all age groups. And I was really worried that this book would really get kind of kiddy and kind of goofy. But, I mean, toward the end, man, I mean, the, the stuff they write in this book, like Garmin, I was kicking people in the knees and, you know, hitting people in the head with a staff and jumping and kicking people and tossing them around and, you know, tackling. It's, it's you know, it's classic Ninjago violence. Nothing of it is, of course, adults only, but it is really good to have a book. Much like the show, you know, because, again, I was really like, oh, this is a canon book. Is it going to get kind of kiddy? Is it going to get kind of stupid? And they didn't. They actually really made it really great for, you know, all ages. Uh, and again, as a 23-year-old lover of Ninjago, I'm, I'm, you know, I was pretty, uh, 
not disappointed. I really enjoyed it. There's kind of like a book ending, you know, in the beginning and the end where Wu and the ninja are kind of talking, you know, maybe like Jay, I think Jay finds an umbrella uh, and, and Wu's like, don't do that. And he's like, you know, why? And he's like, oh, you know, whatever. I, here's my story. And, you know, that's that's all right, I guess, you know, because they have to introduce it. And it works, you know, it's, it's good enough. Uh, but, I, you know, I kind of wish there was a little bit more in there. Again, the writing, is, there's a few jokes that could be a little bit cringy. Will and Garmadon are teenagers at this point, so this is really before, you know, shit at the fan, technically, so I think that really um, th there is a few jokes which it, it makes sense for their character. Nine Co, the cat lady jumping right here, she's a really good character. Um, and it's really cool to, again, see these characters that are new. You know, it's not like, oh, Asphira's in it. They mention Asphira, but she's not really in it. You know, we have Nine Co, we have Komala, we have uh, Dylan, we have uh, Adara or whatever. Is it her name, Adara? I think there's just so many awesome characters in here that you look at it and you're like, wow. Like, that's, it's actually, yeah, Adara. It's actually really cool to see, um, you know, these Ninjago things being written. It's like Star Wars, you know what I mean? Like, we have the episode, you know, we have the prequels, but then we have the Clone Wars show. You know, we have the originals, we have Rebels. The sequels, Resistance, and some more sequel stuff soon, thank God. But it's kind of cool to get that same treatment for Ninjago. And yeah, we're going to be getting a Garmin on comic run, I think five issues. Uh, I do have the second book, which I am currently reading at the time of reviewing this. Uh, if you want me to, I will review the second book. I think The Lair of Tanabrox or something like that. Very cool stuff. Again, this is a great book. If you're a fan of Ninjago, pick up this run. There's only two out right now, but I think there's going to be a third one early next year or sometime in 2022. Again, as a huge Ninjago fan, I was kind of skeptical. Like, oh man, is this going to be kiddie or is this going to be kind of stupid? But they treat it with respect like the show, and I really can't wait to read book two. And uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, the Curse of the Cat Eye Jewel, it's got a few writing issues, you know. But other than that, I do think that it's it really holds up to the show standard in a really fun way. And again, it, all it does is just build upon the canon and the show of Ninjago in a really awesome, badass way where you're like, wow, you know, now there's books, you know? It's not just a show. Now there's books, and there's going to be comic books, and some video games. You know, there's a lot of great stuff, and I think if Ninjago plays their cards right, I think soon we'll have a really good future full of awesome content, you know? Uh, I think Ninjago is one of those shows like Simpsons, uh, Spongebob, South Park, where it's just going to effing go on forever. And while I like that, I made a video on this, so I'm not gonna I'm gonna briefly mention it, but I think Ninjago should end soon. Uh, that's not me saying it sucks and I want it to end. I just don't want Ninjago to get to the point where there's so much content it starts getting bad or kitty or stupid, and then you're like, all right, just end the freaking thing. You know what I mean? So hopefully they can find kind of a middle ground. And I know Ninjago is ultra popular right now as it should be because it's definitely amazing. But I think that if they again, if they really want to keep going, make sure the content is well made because if it isn't. You know, you're going to start heading down that valley slowly but surely of, you know, cutting corners uh, and literally slashing viewer count. I mean, hell, it's not even on the Cartoon Network anymore. So Ninjago has a bit of a rough future, but it's also in a really good spot. And I think, again, they play their cards right. Master Chen, I have all the cards. I think we should have a really good future for this franchise on our hands. Again, if you're an adult, teenager, kid, and you like Ninjago, pick this book up. Really, really cool. And again, it really just explores the canon in a really fun way when Wu and Garmin are teenagers. Thank you, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.